some question and so I wanted to go why are we here give you a status of what has transpired since last week really our work session last Friday morning um, and ultimately staff staff is here because we do think that the MAZ regulations can be improved I fully understand that there are individuals or organizations that disagree about how to improve or if not to improve at all perfectly understand that um, your comments are still welcome. We are still listening about how to find some of these improvements. But ultimately, that's why we're here, is because we do think the regulations can be improved. Where this conversation started is back in 2012, we had a rezoning case that was um, definitely, I did not recommend for planning commission. I don't believe recommended for it. And it was withdrawn before it got to the county commission under some pressure well, from the community and booty. Uh, it was ultimately withdrawn. What that rezoning case did is it attempted to put a very dense subdivision close to Moody. It also spurred on a text amendment to try to negotiate those potential changes on a widespread basis rather than just poking a hole in an area. <clears throat> the text amendment at that time was just to change the density in the MAZ3, which is the furthest area, two and a half acres to one acre. That amendment was also eventually tabled and withdrawn because of similar concerns. During that time, we received direction from county leadership to say, okay, we understand there are some tweaks that need to happen in the MAZ zoning. Staff looking. We began to look into it late 2012, early 2013, throughout that next year. We then had to push pause on the MAZ amendments because we had special events pop up. And we realized and got direction from the county that we needed to address that. Special events probably the most notably is like a Luke Bryan conference. We felt like we needed to um, clarify and strengthen our regulations to address the benefit that size. We did that. We then put Moody back on the top priority list for text amendments. We continued to work through that. And as part of that, start conversations with Moody at a staff level um, to try to talk about where we were together, what concerns were, and how we were going to move forward. All of that, the original goal was to bring something to you into the county commission in May and June. 
when we presented those initial amendments to you, had some comments, took those comments back, requested more time, allowed for more time, and really as of last Monday, we thought we were going to be able to move forward. Um, that was our direction. So we were trying to prepare you and us for a recommendation tonight. About midweek, uh, last week, that direction changed. And the leadership basically gave us a signal that if we thought more time would be helpful and productive, please take it. So with that, that's a little bit about how we got here. Some of the response to this has been, what kind of issues have you seen that has brought this to the table? I tried to go into those three kind of customers that we see, the ones we probably you know, recommend over the phone or tell them over the phone and we never see again, those that we see again and those that go the distance and go to a public hearing like a bearing. I can tell you I've made a list of what are some of the issues that you have heard or commonly heard about while we're here. And that short list is dwellings destroyed by tornadoes, where we had that tornado go through a section of the MAZ a few years ago. Denial of dwellings and accessory dwellings, denial of replacement or improvement of older manufactured housing, noise related complaints, denial of manufactured houses versus site built homes, and denial of divided land for families. I give this to you just as information. From a staff standpoint, we're presented with those issues, and then we take that into the equation of private property rights versus protecting moving from encroachment, and we try to better balance that. Our first draft that we gave to you last Monday, we realized Tuesday morning, really Tuesday and Wednesday, that we were not on the same page with Moody on really two areas. Um, we believe we had a solution worked out for the noise attenuation and noise impact area. The two areas we're not on the same page currently is those affecting density for the family ties land division and the family ties accessory blood. We dug into that much deeper Friday afternoon with a slide that you have. If you don't have the handouts, I have some extra copies here from that table we prepared. But as of tonight, I do not have um, a report from Moody and staff to say, here's where we have agreed and are on the same page or agreed to disagree. I'll be honest, after our work session Friday and really good communication with Moody, I just have not pressed them for I need an answer by tonight. I felt like when we had the green flag for additional time, I, I thought the time would be helpful so that we could come back to y'all with either on the same page or at least a point of agree to disagree and here's where we are. That kind of brings you up to speed. I feel like we had enough time to isolate where the concerns are and we stand ready to try to address questions you may have tonight. But ultimately, I don't have a solution for you for that particular, those two main issues that really involve density. So what we're asking for is, is more time, or if you'd like to move forward tonight, um, we'll just try to address your questions. But ultimately, from a staff standpoint, I would like the opportunity to work with Moody to try to see if we can get to the same page on those two important issues. Jason, thanks for your presentation. I know that we had two lengthy work sessions last week, and I know both of you were bombarded with questions, mm -hmm. but at this time I will open up commissioners for maybe another question or two, if you don't mind. Sure. Commissioners, do we have any questions for, for staff? Commissioner Williams? I asked this question at the work session. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to clear it up on me, and I don't remember. Uh, how many cases do we deal with in the course of related to family ties or these other issues that pertain to MAZ 1, 2, or 3. Um, okay, I just want to make sure you want to know how many times we deal with family-related cases within the MAZ. Everything that we're dealing with that has been brought to us to review. I would say how that... How many cases during the course of the year mm -hmm. do we have? I'd say over the last 10 years, the most controversial cases that we've been involved with Probably number in 10 to 12. Now, 10 to 12 years. Yes, yes, sir. But those are the most controversial ones that take on a public hearing and probably political uh, activity. What I cannot comment to you on is I can tell you we have citizens who call or contact us or um, meet with us and ask us, you know, here's what I like to do, and we tell them all the time. It's not allowed, it's not allowed. Most of the time, we we don't ever hear from those citizens again. Um, in cases where they do want options about what can I do about this, we do meet with them further, but, you know, 
Carmel and I were just speaking about this very issue. We, we, did not, we do not track how many phone calls, emails, or, or meetings. I could probably try to find meetings, but sir, we, we don't have a good count on that section of the crowd, and that is the largest section. Most of the citizens we deal with choose not to go against staff in a public hearing setting and pay $400 and wait 30 days. They, they don't choose that. They just choose to go another direction. Carmelie may help me here, but I just I think that's probably where I'd settle out on that question. That's fair. I guess my main concern for all your presentations is every time you talk about this, you, you, you talk about I'm trying to gain agreement from the very beginning. And, and I see that somewhat as, as you know, we're going to cut off one of your arms. Do you want it to be the right of the mm -hmm. or, or, I mean, the folks you're working with at Moody, I surmise, are asked to work with the camp. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do the best they can to get something livable for the current situation to move. However, <coughs> not to be making this decision in a vacuum, I'm sure you're aware that the city, the county, the chamber, and tons of other groups go repeatedly to Washington, D.C. to lobby the Pentagon all levels to bring additional missions which these folks don't know anything about. And anything we change in the MOZ could very well affect whether those missions ever come. And it is a, you know, everybody in this county is concerned if anything is done to the detriment of movement. And I don't understand why we would not take the larger consideration into account much more strongly than what these folks may or may not want on a current basis, which they're doing a good job and everything they're doing, you are too. But is that conversation being had among county leadership as you mentioned several times? <coughs> there are, I, I'm not aware of all those conversations. I do know that county leadership is very aware of it. And I would argue probably more so than any organization in pocketbook and in time and in support has been probably the strongest advocate for me. So I, I am not aware of all the conversations. I do know they want really here, they want to be healthy, but I can tell you that you know they are aware that Moody's on an island and that there are citizens outside the gates that are due some consideration. And their direction of me was double check what is that consideration, bring something back to us. And so at this point, I've given them drafts, but they haven't seen, you know, a final. And I will say that I fully, I fully recognize, I think, your point about who you're dealing with as far as staff. And, you know, this is commonly the way, the way we deal with Moody is commonly through the staff that we are using now. They are, they are our front door uh, from a staff level. Are they, are, as we both, are we aware of all conversations, especially maybe some of the more confidential ones that involve potential future missions coming down? Probably not. Um, but at the end of the day, we work for individuals who hopefully are. And I can tell you that you know, we have a product here that has gotten accolades, that is innovative, that has done some good. But we want to continue to do that. Our concern is that product we currently have on some front that we've isolated down, we, we have concerns about are we are we doing good for both parties involved, the property owner and movie. And so far that's what the disagreement is, is. There's some that say we are going too far and some that say we've gone far enough and the sacrifice is just. So I I hope I answered some of your questions there, but I'm just going to try to be honest and candid with you, sir, that I I am not aware of the conversations. The point of contact we use here are typically staff-wise, they're our front door. And then we have, I mean, we, we are under a motivation to try to improve with these tweaks. And I can tell you that I, I am not on a laser beam focused to say, appreciate your concerns and I'm not listening. We have been listening, we know where the concerns are. 
at this point, I'd like to believe we can constructively try to work with them rather than say everything is is now need to be pushed aside. It's just not good enough. So I'm still of the motivation that it's still workable. The improvements are still worthwhile and reasonable, except for those two issues because I just can't offer you a current status on that. I can only offer you a first draft that, in my opinion, was not successful, and we're going to try to come back to you with something that is is able to be successful. Curious at any point in time, or, or, or will this committee hear from you directly, or um, I? You mean like in writing, like we'll get a written response? Will they come up here and tell us what they're disagreeing with, or what they are agreeing with? Yes, I mean I, I, I think at the work sessions and so far in communications, I think they are definitely free to speak. I think we're on the same page about where the disagreements are. If the planning commission. Um, if we had not had signals to table the request, I think there would have been a colonel here last last month to try to present some of these concerns. But whether or not they'll speak tonight is certainly up to them. But I, you know, they're they're definitely welcome to communicate with y'all, and I think we are on the same page about where the concerns are. Oh, I mean, my thousand not on the same page. Haven't heard anything. Sure. Thank you. 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 Thank up here, I'll just ask you if, if by chance this is table for additional 30 days mm -hmm. or more work on the two main pressing points that we see is the accessory building and the family ties. Is that something that is attainable that will not at all do any damage to our relationship with Moody going forward or is it just a dead point? I, I think it's attainable even if we get to a point to where you know, Moody says we'd, we'd rather things remain the same. You know, that at least gives y'all options to consider about do we do anything. So, my preference is yes, I think in the next couple of weeks that we can come to a position and agreement to share with y'all for your consideration <coughs> on those two issues. I just did not, based on what happened last week, press forward for tonight because I felt like it was just, it was not worth it the amount of time that we had. Be no more questions at this time. We will entertain anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request can approach the podium at this time. It appears there is none. If there is anyone here wishing to speak in denial of this request, please come <coughs> at this time. State your name and your address for the record when you get to the podium. <coughs> well, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Ron Waters. I live at 1718 Williams Street. I have some brief prepared remarks I'd like to read to you and then perhaps answer any questions. Moody makes a direct economic impact on a six-county area of $460 million. Of this, the direct economic impact of Moody on Lowndes County is $441,600,000. The economic activity related to Moody supports 7,344 jobs and approximately 11% of the population of Lowndes County is directly associated with Moody Air Force Base. The children affiliated with Moody who attend school in this region support an estimated $34,600,000 in gross regional product and 528 educated related jobs and represents another $27 million in labor income impact in addition to the direct economic impact. Those uh, are my prepared remarks. I have here uh, from the chamber, and I'm here today as a citizen, as a realtor, but principally as the chairman of the board of directors for the Valdosta Lounge Chamber of Commerce. I have these prepared remarks, which is the chamber board of directors position in writing. I'd like to distribute those to you, to you and how would that be best done, Mr. Chairman? Should I give them to you or give them to the individuals? That's right. Well, thank you. I don't want to take up too much time.
got one left. Is it okay if Carmella has it just in case she runs out of scratch paper? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, in the interest of time, this pretty much concludes my remarks. But I would like to leave you with these two thoughts, though, is that this seems to be, and Jason has done a wonderful job in presenting this case here, but this seems to be a cure in search of an illness. I think that we have, over these, as uh, Mr. Willis had, uh, had um, devolved here, that we've had uh, approximately a few cases over the past 10 years, on one year. And I believe these cases have uh, reached resolution through the, uh, through the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. And so uh, with that, I'm going to uh, surrender the podium and uh, bid you good evening. Owners, do we have any questions for presenter? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We do have time for someone else wishing to speak and deny on this request. My name is Michael Lee. I'm, I live at 4289 Spring Grant Circle. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I am here this evening representing the South Georgia Military Affairs Council, which is an original effort to protect the presence of Moody Air Force Base in our community. Uh, it's clear in our conversations with community stakeholders uh, here and in Washington, it's very likely that we will experience another round of to realign the closure, potentially in the next three to five years. In addition to that, it's also clear that uh, one of the current main missions of moving the AT platform uh, is going away. Uh, this year when we were in Washington, we heard very clearly um, from Congress that they realized that it's also going away. We didn't hear that last year. Our concern is that at this time, Moody and our community needs to be ready to receive uh, the mission or the missions that the Air Force would deem Moody to be a good fit for, uh, which may in fact mean a broadening of the MAZ and particularly the noise attenuation standards. So as our community works tirelessly to make sure that our community remains attractive for Moody for future missions, our concern that if we do anything with the MAZ, we may send the wrong message to the Air Force and to our, our good community friend, Moody Air Force Base. I have heard um, the explanation as to where this originated, and it's been pointed back to the 2012 attempt to punch into the MAZ with a dense residential uh, development. But I can't connect that with the family division. So I agree when, when Ron says this is a cure for an illness that does not exist. Um, I guess that would be my message tonight. Let's not gamble with the movie's future over a prescribing a cure for something like that. I also have for you an expanded um, in writing position paper from the South Georgia Military Affairs Council that I'd like to pass around. Be a, 
We will accept one more presenter if you if somebody if wishes to speak in denial this request. One more presenter if wishes to speak in denial. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, my name is Bruce Aldred. Uh, my address is 5755 Jacaranda Road, Lake Park. Uh, and I want to talk to you today and remind you about 10 years or so ago, uh, this county along with a lot of people and a lot of organizations decided it was a good idea to protect moon and they formed the maz and what i'm asking you today is consider that how brave they were in making that decision because yes it did restrict some property on the rights we know it did and it still does today but they do have some relief from those restrictions so i'd like to you know, just make sure that we keep that in our mind but by doing this we made some friends in the right places. Uh, Mike uh, earlier alluded to going to Washington. I've been on three of those trips to the Pentagon, and I can assure you that the people in the highest positions of the Air Force know where Valdosta, Georgia is, and knows the kind of relationship that we have with Moody Air Force Base, and they respect it, and they talk about it a lot. Anything that we do to damage that credibility or that trust that we're going to take care of Moody could damage us down the road. And that's our biggest fear. I represent the Government Affairs Council. That's uh, part of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm the chairman. And this is kind of what I do on a, a full-time basis away from my regular work. So please think about that, that. We need to protect our entire community, even though it may have a negative impact on some landowners. Uh, I think that's very important. And I'll, I'll be glad to take any questions. Any questions for presenter and commissioners? Any questions at all? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Anybody from Moody would really like to come forth to the microphone this time? <laughs> Bill Bryan, I'm the Chief Engineer of Moody Air Force Bank. I live at uh, 356 A. Um, you brought us some, some excellent points. Uh, uh, myself and my staff here uh, are not at the Pentagon level, so it's going to what's going to happen in the future. Uh, we, we, in our work session, we did talk about what happened in the last couple of rounds the kinds of questions we had to answer. Um, and, um, some of them were pretty straightforward, some of them were maybe a little bit nebulous. Um, I think Moody right now is in a, is in a good position. We do feel protected uh, by the APC. Um, so uh, really I can just answer any questions. several times, I think it was in the Carabetta property, which was a leftover piece of property from our project housing development. We had a developer that had a piece of property that was carved off another development that had put his grandfather in. And uh, he wanted to put a, basically a high-rise, uh, fairly high-density development, very close to the room that we, we, 
we had the lives in opposition to that. I don't think anybody other than the developer really was in favor of it. I, I would like to say that um, Moody is not against development. We would just like compatible development uh, that, that meets the Air Force criteria, uh, the various flavors of our ACOs, our ICE map, J Lust, the, the different studies that y'all have been involved in. We just want to we want to follow those. Um, I, I think you have, and I think we have. So any questions? Do you deal with <coughs> complaints when people pick up the phone and say, hey, somebody buzzed my house or something like that? Is that Actually, our, our public affairs office does that. Um, I can tell you that we get uh, very few compared to other bases I've been at. I mean, we get more or we get less in a year than the base I was at in California got in a month. I'm just curious. I've never heard anybody complain uh, in the neighborhoods around people that I they they, they tend to be the one-off type things. You know, some you know, we get a we've had SR 71s uh, fly through the area, so it was really not even our aircraft. Uh, sonic booms, things like that. Generally, you know, they tend to can't cause a sonic boom, so when we get those, we obviously are, are <laughs> thinking somebody else. You can't. You can't. Do it. <laughs> on an Air Force base and say, that's not my airplane. <laughs> 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 that read right through out of there with the Well, we get, a lot, we get a lot of traffic <laughs> from other, and the, the Marine Corps, the uh, Sword Buford, things like that, come through the area. Um, we, we are, in a, if you look at a, at a map of this area, there's there's a lot of military traffic that uh, flows through this area, high and low levels. So, just because of the airplane making noise doesn't necessarily make it with the Air Force folks, but we, we, we get calls. And I've never heard of any complaint about it. Just curious. We, we do get some complaints about it. They're very infrequent. And generally from a couple of specific sources. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Mr. Brown, I know at our work session on Friday morning it was mentioned that in the last round of Brad that actually since we have like an account rooftops. Yes, sir. Is, is, is the habits of those also figured in or just create a rooftop account? Just curious. Um, I think it was just rooftops. Just uh, rooftops. Je yes. Uh, Jeff actually did the count when he was my community planner. Yes, um, it was physical number number of residences within a particular area. Residences? Yeah. Not, not like accessory buildings. It was well. It was it was well. Mr. Brown, my assumption I alluded to earlier. I just wonder what your thoughts on it would be. I mean, I, I take it that you would be working on current uses of the Air Force Base. Yes, sir. And something you do today very well could preclude a future use by any some agreement you might make as to change it to the MSA. Yes, sir. Is that a fair statement? Yes, sir. It is. Um, I counted it up the other day. I've worked. Uh, 17 uh, major mission changes in the Air Force Base uh, since the early 90s. Uh, when I got here, we were flying F-4s, F-16s, all the different flavors of F-16s, composite wings, rescue wings, you, you, you name it. We were, I, I actually, we had a, a team from Air Combat Command here last week talking about three new missions from the Air Force Base. Now, some of them very little impact. One of them was replacing our old helicopters with new helicopters. Uh, we looking at putting a test and evaluation facility here for the new, new helicopters. They looked at some new ground uh, vehicles that you've seen on the on TV, the Air Force and Army are buying some air droppable, air transportable uh, vehicles. Uh, we're scheduled to get some of those. Uh, so we were, we, we're working new missions all the time, uh, but major new missions like changing out uh, uh, aircraft uh, or uh, like the, the mission we actually had public hearings on for uh, CBAT, Common Battlefield Airman Training Center. That would have been 
a major thing because we're talking about bringing thousands of you know, airmen in here every year to, to train out of the Grand Air Range. Now that, that proposal was withdrawn by the Air Force, but it was not because we or Grand Ray couldn't accept the mission. They just decided the war was going down and they didn't need to do that major training center. It is, it's nice to know, and I, I see all the time, I get phone calls all the time, that Moody is very, very flexible uh, in the types of facilities we've built in the kind of area. We're very lucky that the approach is difficult. We basically live on the second largest blackwater swamp in the United States. Uh, the south end of the airfield is Grand Bay Swamp. The north end is Banks Lake, kind of. Uh, so uh, it's very nice. Just by geography, we haven't had a lot of encroachment. I guess my concern is we make a decision that it's already and everybody in the room does the best they can. And then three years from now, we look back and say, boy, I wish we had done that because now we can't do it. It's going to be significant. That's a valid concern. The, the base I was at in California went through the same thing. More and more and more and more and more development, closer and closer and closer, and the base closed. Uh, that's, that's a true statement. You can look up Georgia Air Force Base, the high division of California, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I, I can't say it would happen here. Uh, I would fight very hard so that it wouldn't. make a decision on black a black a uh, variance issue or family ties issue instead of by right in other words like we're fixing to do right now where it would be by right do you think that might be better where we hear it on an individual basis versus a by right to let people do based on what we approve well let me first say that there are some things that jason and his staff work that we have a lot of those are fairly simple procedural changes. There was one about a power height versus a milling height that, that, that were disconnected. They, they clearly can be one. I mean, there's no sense controlling a tower if it's going to be shorter than a tree. And the airplane's going to run in the tree before it gets to the tower. Um, so I think there are, there are a number of things in this review that we agree with, absolutely 100% agree. Um, the issue of density is where we tended to uh, not agree. That, I think that, would, that might be a very good solution, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, and maybe, you know, there's a, there was a concern, I think, during our discussion that the, the fee is fairly high for a developer. You maybe consider making that fee a little less onerous to make it you know, so that they, they can feel more comfortable coming to a board like this. Ask for some relief. Uh, I, I'm gonna. It's part of my job to oppose a lot of development around the base. A, a lot of uh, uh, not not being development. Uh, development that I think uh, adverse to, to uh, future missions and, and to daily missions.
Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not ashamed to say I got a lot of heartburn with a lot of the issues here. Uh, I've had the opportunity to go several times with government leaders uh, to the Pentagon, and they always brag on Valdosta and Lambs County for protecting moving aboard the approach. So I, I do, I personally have a lot of concern. Um, I think we may have some opportunities to <coughs> accept some of them, maybe reject some of them, make some procedural changes or whatever. Um, my idea would be, if uh, the rest of the commissioners might agree with it, would be, instruct Jason to come back with a line item each individual thing. If the towers is okay with, with them, that might be something. Some of the other issues, uh, I, I dare say right now, if we put this whole thing before the board right now, it would almost, I may be wrong, but it would probably be voted down in the house. Um, so the only way it's going to survive and if we want it to survive, is look at it from a peaceful standpoint. Is that going to happen? I don't know. But that is an option. Um, if we could instruct uh, Jason to come back with a line item on each individual item for us to address, not saying that it all may not be rejected, but at least we'd be able to look at it on a case, a, a, a line item basis. And, and the thing that I proposed possibly for us to entertain in a work session was make some procedural changes for MAZ1 to all three MAZ zones. Seems how it's come for us to try and make a decision on this. And there's only been 10 or 12 cases in 10 or 12 years. Um, Maybe you could come back with some procedural changes that would, any variances, uh, special exceptions, or whatever the case is, it might normally would go through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Only in MAZ, possibly come back before this board to look at on a case by case basis. By doing that, you would get a second set of eyes to be able to look at it which would be the county commissioner who can make the final decision. And <coughs> Moody would have the opportunity to air their concerns in two different places and have several minds to look at it to where we hopefully might not make the mistake that I'm really concerned that we might make here. So that's my thoughts. And if, if anybody else sees the same way, Military First Council made a very good point when he said that the 2012 rezoning case did not, does not connect at all with the issue that we have been discussing, which is the family ties and the accessory dwelling discussion. And to me, the argument right now in support of these two points is very weak because we don't have satisfactory evidence. Other than, well, I mean, what I would like to see is like a traffic engineer steer. They go out, there is a problem with traffic intersection. They go there and they measure how much traffic and then they come up with a solution. What I would like to recommend or I would like to see the county do is if this is really a stressing issue with the private property owners, is let us get some numbers to back that up. So we, if we want to uh, modify the current regulations addressing specifically family ties and accessory dwellings, 
would like to see numbers that can support that argument. I think the, the, going back to the 21 plus only case, that's a very, that's exactly what the NAC is there to do, is to prevent that type of development, high density development from happening around the base. Um, so if Jason is asking, I think he's asking us today to make a recommendation to allow additional time for the staff to be able to revise some of the text amendments that have already been put forth, knowing that this is not going to, most likely is not going to pass. I think, I, I think there's more work to be done to get to the point where satisfactory amendments will be um, needed for us to actually do. I don't know if that, if that came across the way I, I, want, I want it. Um, other than some of the procedural items that Commissioner Lewis just mentioned, and for example, fixing some of the elements, like, you know, in one area you have the, the building height of 25 feet, there's a power height of 25 feet, we have some of these items, like fixing, um, very small elements in there, like the, the numbers fixing that, A, B, C, etc. I think we should not be, um, at this point, I don't think the county is ready to put forth amendments to, 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 to address family ties and accessory weapons. So I would like to propose that this be indefinitely, um, not indefinitely, but I would like not to put a time on these amendments until the county actually has adequate um, data to support the requirement to amend the NMC regulations. Are, are you saying that you want to address it in some other fashion until yeah. there's more information? I like think, I'm what about, I would like to yeah, what I would like to recommend is is to remove any NAC regulations at this point, other than very specific procedural criteria and mistakes that can be very clearly fixed. They can come back to us next month. Uh, also, you can include the general amendments that were also lump sum in this, uh, in what we looked at, the general information that has nothing to do with the MNC. We can look at those separately if we need to. But I think as far as um, making any changes to MNC in its current content, um, it, is, it is premature. We don't have sufficient to do that. So yes, I would recommend to just do, remove everything that's content, come back only for the procedural items, items like mistakes that have to be corrected. Okay, item that, by item. Would that not work if we line out of each individual thing and you say like the antennas? Well, that's acceptable. This is acceptable. Yes. This is not acceptable unless we press that in another fashion. That's fine, but I don't believe, I think we spent a lot of time discussing family ties and accessory dwelling, and that is a direct, um, that directly affects the density around the base. We are not prepared. I don't believe the county has enough or had, has adequate data to support the changes. And so I would like to not even see those items for next month. I would just like the items that are procedural in nature or mistakes that have to be corrected to maintain consistency from chapter two to chapter four and so forth. But no change in content. That is my recommendation. Commissioner, I think you very astutely pointed out one of the major problems with the changes, and that is from a density perspective, if we lowered it to one acre in those particular areas, that opens up the legal argument for anybody that's not a family why is it fair for family ties to be able to do it on one acre and not need to develop my land on one acre, which is also a uh, I think it's a, a very, very, very big point that we should be concerned about. But I like the thought that you have as far as the mundane changes that need to be able to the, the protection of all areas. In the digital discussion, Commissioner Willis, I see you. I extended your clarification. So you're saying not even have the just go, just accept certain one like the antennas, etc., and not even change the procedural part. 
to address that. I think what she's saying is anything to do with the family ties and the accessory bills that we've been talking at length, and to this, the whole district is not even consider that until they come back with something else. But, but the procedural stuff, the, the dot the I's and cross the T stuff, that we there are mistakes are in font size, et cetera, that we could consider that on a line item in 30 days. If I'm not, if I believe that's what well, you that's, said. That's exactly right. I don't think there's sufficient data to support the changes that affect the regulations that of the land use. But shouldn't we line out of these things so we'll be able oh, to pick out yeah, the things that mm -hmm. yes, we want? Well, you've you already said there's yeah. two things you don't want, and I agree. Mm -hmm. But the other items, we need to know what they are and say, okay, this is acceptable, yes. this is acceptable, mm -hmm. this is acceptable, and go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay? I understand that. Anything else? I have a question. Yes, Jason, didn't you say the people that were wanting an antenna or whatever it was that they wouldn't pay the fee to come in or get the request? We've had some cases where that fee has been an issue, yes, sir. Where been an issue? Yes, sir. But they, did anybody, has anybody come in and paid the fee? Yes, sir. We've had people, we've had some people just push through that and said, we're going to go ahead and pay and go on to a public hearing process. How many? Um, I mean, I think that's that tw 10 to 12 number. I don't think all of them were successful, but those are the ones that I, I can that I can push forward and say these are the ones I think we've had. Okay, I haven't been in your work sessions, and that's just just my feeling though. And uh, if if it's not broke, why do you want to try to fix it? I mean, why can't you just trash it? Any further discussion? I know we've in the last uh, 30 days have had a lot of consideration on this, and the last seven days have had a lot of work sessions on this. We've all got a, got a lot of information thrown at us and uh, trying to digest it all and, and, and to make a good decision as it's going forward. I know all of us want to make sure that that Moody stays here for many, many, many more days going forward. But at this time, we do have to make some type of motion and our recommendation so we can move forward. So at this time, I will open this up for a recommendation, recommendation motion on this agenda item. Mr. Chair. Commissioner huh? Willis. I make a motion that we instruct Mr. Davenport to take each individual issue that we're addressing in this uh, Unified Land Development Company. We're, at our next meeting, we can address each one, like we're discussing, the, discussing the powers, etc. And if others totally kicked out, we'll be able to make that motion at that time and deal with each individual item. So I make a motion that we instruct him to come back with a line item agenda for the next it, does, does, does that include involved? Huh? Does that include the density issues that we've been discussing? Or we want to table that to much further out? Well, it, it, if it's not, not going to be an issue, we might as well take it out now. So let's eliminate it now. We'll eliminate those two items and address the other issues. I just want to say that that motion is procedurally getting us where we want to get. Have to make a motion to table all of them. Is that what you're saying? 
That's correct. Okay. So um, you, you want to you want to all line all of them, including the land. So would you please say that again, Commissioner Willis, so we all hear it again? Okay. The entire plan, the the, uh, the entire unified land development code that you're presenting, all the changes, line item each one of them, so we can address each one, include the density. And uh, I make a motion that we table it right now, the entire plan until the next meeting, and you come back with those those items. Commissioner Bolton, is that what you were saying? Commissioner Glad, is that what you were saying? So we have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Willis. Do we have a second on it? So we have a second for Commissioner Raker. All in favor of the motion for Commissioner Willis, please signify by raising your right hand. That is seven four. All opposed? All opposed. Affirmative. So we have seven in favor of the, the, the motion to table the question of 30 days. Seven and one. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Carmel. Thank you guys very much. I know we specifically cheered quite often the last few days. I appreciate everybody's hard work. Attention to that matter. Do we have any matters of housework that we need to attend to, Mr. Martin? Um, it's your meeting on July 27th, which will be your next regular meeting. Uh, one of the agenda items will be a presentation from the CEO, President of the Transport Hall. Um, it's 100% the long-term transportation plan for the public, public comment and outreach. Um, this will be about a 10 15 minute presentation, not very long. Um, you can include that at the beginning of the agenda or at the end of the agenda. Okay, well, it, it, it doesn't matter to me. I, I suppose we can talk about it there until before then, whatever works out best for the commissioner. All right, anything else in the other house, keep me out If not, appreciate everybody being here. Thank you for your time. Commissioner, thank you very much. I call this meeting adjourned.